Welcome back to another GSC. We're test fitting. I don't know that I'd call it test fitting, but we're, we're test somethinging. I got an HX35 shoved in there for, I guess, giving myself some ideas for our center mount turbo system. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and kind of point and talk and try to explain what we're gonna do here. The HX35 has a wastegate on it. I did not clock anything. I mean, it literally came off my garage floor. It was on a Cummins for years. And now it's in, sitting under the hood of Sherman to give me an idea how much space I don't have. So we'll flip it around and admire the beauty and hopefully get some ideas here. The one thing that sucks is that, well, the S300 is even bigger. So it's going to take up even more room, which means I'm going to have to probably find a better way to tuck this sucker in here. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got the HX35 kind of slid in. It's a little wedged here. I've got my trans dipstick is going to be a little bit of a in the way situation. Fuel filter head is going to have to get relocated somewhere up there. Downpipe is going to have to get modified to go from here over to the factory downpipe, which most of you know where that goes. The air intake is going to come over here, and we're going to have to move the driver's side battery in order to really give ourselves enough space to plumb an intake on. So we're gonna kind of wanna run that intake from the turbo and I'll build a box right here. This is gonna go to the other side. The back side of the turbo, the HX35 is a lot smaller than an S300, but you can see it's real tight firewall there. So, if I were to take the wastegate off of this, I think I could probably lower the whole apparatus about an inch and a half. But the S300 is also about an inch and a half to two inches bigger in every general direction. So that's going to be pretty tight. This, I mean, I literally pulled this thing right out of the garage. It came off of Cummins after being used for years, and I just set it in here to get an idea exhaust flange is pointed back which is already kind of the general plan here to come right up with the up pipes and land with our flange kind of tipped down to meet the firewall angle and as long as it could match that angle we should be in pretty good shape um obviously this is just kind of a, a test thing this is too high i now know that i need to be basically here so I got to drop another two inches. So I'm definitely thinking that when we go to the S300, I'm going to have to tuck that turbo back into the firewall and down, which the exhaust housing shape, if I do it right, should allow me to kind of cantilever back and put that flange closer to the firewall, sucking the turbo down into that valley. The only thing then is I'm going to really have to find my routing for my downpipe because that's going to come off here over and go down right over the cdr and everything so that's going to be kind of a tight fit the only bonus is is that i mean i'm gonna have two batteries on that side now and everything kind of tucked over there and it'll give me some room on this side to finally do a couple things so i think ultimately that's where the turbo is gonna end up kind of for the most part i wanted to set it up like a duramax and have it face the front of the truck and do all that cool stuff but it's just it's physically not possible now that i'm actually standing here with a turbo in my hand i'm sure if i had an 80 bitty exhaust housing and tiny little pedestal i could make it work but i don't think that that's really the the move here so i think i'm going to go ahead and go this route and just make it make it work in that position i mean i've got i have room down here I got a lot of dead space here that I could cut out of the intake and kind of tip this down from my pedestal. So that's going to be good. And it's going to help kind of give us some more space. So I'm going to pop my phone off the tripod here and kind of give you a closer tour of how this all sits. And that way you guys can understand kind of what my plan of action is here. All right. So here's from the side. We're real close to that wiper motor. So I'm going to probably try to take the turbo slightly passenger side. You can see down here, 
I have lots of space, lots of room, but I also have a lot of wearing I need to work around because this is going to stay a DS4 for now. I'm not mechanically swapping it yet. So that being said, I'm going to have to get a retune and get some figuring out done. You can see back here, the T3 flange is basically whacking the firewall. Obviously, if I do some tippage and twistage, I'll probably be able to avoid that. It's just... Like I said, this turbo, literally, I pulled it off the garage floor. I didn't clock anything, didn't touch anything. But you can see back down in here that as long as I shield that wiring, I should be able to bring my up pipes up, keep everything out of the way, and then kind of bring my down pipe from here over and down into a stock location. As for oil feed and drain, I think ultimately, seeing how high this is, my drain's going to come right out. And go right over my valve cover like I want it to. I'm not going to have to worry about going uphill or needing a, a scavenger pump. So that's good. Oil feed's a little tall. So I think I'll probably end up having to bury the turbo a little bit more. And then get a custom 90 degree fitting to try to come right 90 with an O-ring fitting right off the side of this thing. And back over our feed port which is somewhere down below there which you can't see in this video. So... As of right now, this is kind of the position we're going to pick. And this is how it's going to probably go in the future. I got to get an S300 in my hands and see how well it's going to fit. But I just wanted to give everybody kind of a prelim of how I was going to set the turbo on this thing. So keep following along, like, subscribe, and we'll keep working on this center mount setup. I'm going to throw some pictures in here and go get warm.